Hey, Peter. Long time no shot, huh? Uh, sorry. Who's this? Oh, come on, Peter. How could you forget me so quickly? It's Amber, your ex-wife. Mother of your kid. I know you still think about me. Even after all these years, don't act like you don't. Oh, you! How could I forget you? It's been like 20 years. And you got something wrong, by the way. I have a daughter, not a son. Right! It was a daughter. My bad. Mona, right? She must be all grown up now. Like 23, if I remember correctly. Man, I miss seeing her. Looks like you've abandoned so many kids that you've lost count of their ages and genders. Don't make fun of me, Peter. Why shouldn't I? Have you been able to hold down a job or a marriage since you left me? You've been bouncing from one sugar daddy to another. Like a leaf in the wind, never really settling down. Oh, have you been keeping tabs on me all this time? See? I knew it. You still love me, Peter. Well, I don't. Deep down, you know you do. Just admit it. It won't hurt, you know. How could I love a woman who hurt me so badly? A woman who took everything from me when I was at my lowest, without a second thought. A woman who left me with a three-year-old daughter to take care of while I was fighting for my life in the hospital. Please, Peter, let's not dwell on that right now. It's all in the past. Let's move on. Is it all in the past? That's all you have to say about your terrible actions? You left me because I was broke, Amber. You didn't care about how much you hurt me or our daughter. You were seriously ill. And we didn't have the money to pay for your medical bills. I was scared you were going to die. I had to look out for myself. And you left your daughter behind? Did you even think for a moment about how she would cope without you? Did you ever consider what would have happened to her if I hadn't survived that illness? Well, that's why I left her with you at the hospital. If something happened to you, the hospital would have taken her into their foster care system and everything would have been fine. So that was your calculation? That was why you abandoned me? And the five years of marriage we had behind us for a silly old man? Peter. Peter may have been silly and old, but he was rich. He could take care of me. He could foot my bills and afford me the lifestyle of luxury I've always dreamed of living. And when you found a comfortable life for yourself, you never came back for Mona? He didn't want her. That's why you threw your entire future away. And all for what? A couple thousand dollars from a near dying man? And what has happened to him now? Newsflash, he's six feet under. And you? A four-time widow and a five-time divorcee? <laughs> the Guinness Book of World Records should really consider putting you in for the most marriages in one's lifetime. I'm sorry, Peter. You're right. I was a terrible person and a bad mother, not to talk of a foolish wife, but I am sorry. I really regret leaving you the way I did. I have to admit, I regret ever going away. I should have stayed. Maybe if I did... You'd have had a stake in my company and in all my assets, right? Well, that will never happen. No, no! This has nothing to do with your money, Peter. Even though I know you now do better for yourself, and you now own a large company and lots of cars. But it's not about all of those things. It's just about you and how much I wish to be part of your life again. What? Do you think that you could just disappear for two decades, resurface when you feel like it, and simply finesse your way back into my life? Hell no. I just want things to go back to the way it used to be. Things can never go back to how they used to be, Amber. When you left me, I had to build anew, all alone and with my daughter by my side. She's the only woman I now truly love. And you will never have a place in my heart or in my life ever again. Peter, please hear me out. There's nothing to hear from you, Amber. If you know anything at all about me, you'd know that I'm a pretty busy man now. I don't have time for frivolities. Just one minute, please. I beg you. I've given you more than enough minutes already. Get off my line and never call me again. She did what? After all these years? Calm down, Mo. It wasn't as bad as you think it is. Anything involving that witch of a woman is bad even before Inception. Oof, wasn't that a little too harsh? 
Harsh? Don't even get me started on what's harsh, Dad. Harsh is her leaving you when you were sick and I was just three years old. Harsh is her dancing in the arms of an old sickly drug lord all because he was richer than us. Harsh is her trying to come back into our lives and pretend like nothing ever happened. She better not try that around me because she's gonna get burned. Are you really that angry at your mom, my princess? No. Correction. She's not my mom. She may be your ex-wife, your ex-lover, or anything you might choose to refer to her as, but she is Amber to me. Amber the Wicked Witch. I understand how this may make you angry and spark up a lot of negative emotions, but let's be a bit more logical about this matter right now. How so? Amber was once my wife, Mona. She is also your mother, and that gives her a right of reportable, if not anything else. I really don't want to hear anything that woman wants to say to me or to you, Dad. People change. Mona, remember that. Though she did the wrong thing by leaving us when she did, I honestly feel a strong remorse for everything. Amber was the daughter of one of the biggest oil moguls in the state. I knew she had expensive taste when I met her, one that could even get violent at times. But I ignored everything and took her home anyway. Blinded by love at the time, she decided to follow a young broke man like myself, hoping all will get well soon. But it never did. She got disowned by her parents, and for the five years of our marriage, I made her suffer. Don't tell me you're feeling guilty for all that happened, Dad. We all have a part to play in every event that occurs in the process of our existence. We just have to figure out a way to solve the problems that challenge us. Ugh, oh, please, Dad. I'm really not in the mood for your parables and words of wisdom. I just need you to block that woman's number this instant. You have a big contract to secure in two days time. You should be preparing and not considering anything that evil woman said to you. She's bad luck. You're right. Duh. I'm always right, aren't I? I guess I have a confession to make though. Oh, really? Tell me. I need you to promise you won't get upset. I promise. I never really got over your mom. What? Amber really hurt me, and there's no debating that. But in 20 years, I've been unable to waive the feeling that I pushed her to a life of promiscuity. Don't get it twisted. Amber was the light of my life when we first started out. I'm the one at fault here. I just couldn't satisfy her needs. Dad, you can't possibly take the blame for something that was totally not your fault. You've just made me hate her all the more now. That was not my intention, Mona. It's just the truth. She's one of the reasons I decided to man up and build this empire. Ugh. I can't believe you right now, Dad. You can't blame a man for wanting to spend his money on the woman he loves, can you? She's not your woman anymore. Stop saying that. You're making me want to puke. She was my first and only love, Mo. You have to understand me. You're not getting back with Amber, Dad. And that's final. Well then, maybe I should marry Shanice. I may be advanced in age, but I still have young blood running in my veins, you know. Shanice? That's my best friend! I know. I was just thinking, since you do not want me to remarry your mother, maybe I could marry your friend. Yeah? Ew! Shanice cannot be my stepmom! Gosh, that's so creepy! So? As much as I hate to say it, I actually prefer my real mom. Thank you very much. Yippee! Grow up, Dad! I'll try. But seriously though, there's somebody who has been considering it. I would love to marry her if things with your mother don't work out. Okay. Who is it? I really can't type. I'll say it in a voice note instead. Whoa! What? I knew you would react that way. But your mother will always be my first choice. I just need to find out if she has really changed. So how do you plan to figure out if mom is genuinely sorry? I don't know. Let's just see where life takes us, right? No. That nonchalance was what put you in trouble in the first place, Dad. You need to take matters into your own hands. How? If Mom was your first option, then she has to pass a test first. Huh? What kind of test is that? You'll see. But if she doesn't pass, then we'll go with Plan B. Oh, that's fine by me. Hello, Mona? How are you doing? Who is this, please? Your mother, Amber. Oh, I didn't think you still existed. Peter didn't tell you I called in? I guess I just hope your wicked head got run over by a truck. 
It's a shame your desires for me were not granted. They will be sooner or later. Trust me. Well, I didn't call to revel in our animosity. I'll deal with that some other time. So, what do you want? I heard Peter is dead now. Peter is dead now. Do you see how you said that so casually? You definitely cannot hear my tone of voice through text, Mona. I am grieving more than you can imagine right now. I can't imagine that Peter is dead. I just spoke to him like... A week ago. I am grieving right now, Amber. I honestly do not need your evil presence around me. Amber, is that what you call me? Are you anything else? You're no more than a normal person to me. So you'd be seriously silly to expect anything more. You should be glad I'm even giving you any form of audience. But you've had more than enough. I'll block your number right now, and you should never contact me again. No! Wait! Mona! Please don't do that. I just wanted to send my condolences to you and his family for the grave loss. Your condolences have been received. Now get lost. Can I come to see him? See who? A dead man? A few minutes alone with his buddy will mean the entire world to me. I never got the chance to tell him how sorry I was when he was alive. I might as well do it now. I'll have to die as well for that to happen, you witch. You're the reason we went through so much pain and suffering in the first place. I'm begging for your forgiveness. Mana, please. I'm sorry for all I did to you and Peter. It's too late now, Amber. Please, let me grieve in peace. Then I can at least have an invite to his funeral. What? How much lower can you stoop, Amber? Do you have no shame at all? You left this man when he had nothing. And now, you want to attend his funeral? If anything, you should stay as far away from him as you can. You silly ingrate. Enough. Enough of this insult. I did not come here to trade words with you, little girl. I am demanding that you give me an invite to my husband's funeral this instant. I've already told you. The answer is no. And don't you dare refer to yourself as my father's wife. You're not. In case you were not told, let me remind you that Peter and I never signed any divorce papers. So, we are still legally married. And as such, I have all rights in the world to any of his properties I so desire. I'll be at the funeral, whether you like it or not. Let's watch and see. Hi, Mona. I'm outside the venue now. Wow. This has to be the most organized funeral I've ever seen. Everything looks so... expensive. Real though? Are you that desperate, Amber? You didn't even get an invite. What are you doing here? I just want to take back what's rightfully mine. I have the right to be at my husband's burial ceremony. I don't want you here. But I'm here now. And there's really nothing you can do about it. You're unbelievable. Where are you, by the way? I can't see you outside. I'm not outside like that. I am outside the gates. The security guards won't let me in because I don't have an invite. Perfect. You might just as well stay there for the duration of the service. No! I'm coming in. Even if I have to force my way in. Try telling them your dad's wife and see if they let you in. Yes! That's a bright idea. You get more stupid with each passing second. <laughs> they refused to let me in. Oh? Why? They said Sir Peter had no wife. Exactly. That's what I wanted you to hear. You do not exist in this environment. So, you had better return to wherever it is you came from. Now let me be. We're taking Dad's body to his private graveyard now. So, ciao. Wait, is that a golden casket I see? Wow, it shines so brightly in the sun. Was it really made of gold? Yes, 100%. Wow, Peter was even richer than I could imagine. Please let me come in and offer my condolences. I've told you time and again, your condolences are really not needed here. I've sent bouncers to kick you out of the premises. You can't do that, Mona. I'm your mother. Oops. Already did. So, what's next? I've 
asked you to stop contacting me, Amber. I'm not contacting you, silly girl. I'm simply asking what's next. How? I don't understand. Now that Peter has been buried, what's the next step? I don't seem to catch your drift. What next step are you asking about? There has to be a will, no? What did he leave behind for his wife? For me? I think I finally found something to like about you, Amber. You're a big dreamer. What made you think that, after everything, my dad would leave anything behind for you? Did he have anything when you left? So he left nothing behind for me at all? Of course not. Well, if you must know, he left all his assets to his son, daughter, and grandkids. Peter had a son. Did he get married again? Nope. That's me, my husband, and my kids. You're married? Happily, too. How come you never told me this? I need to see my grandkids. I've told them they don't have a grandmother. You cannot do that, Mona. I'm still alive and well. I don't care. Well, since Peter left nothing behind for me, I want something that is already of no use or value to both of you. Which is... The golden casket y'all buried six feet into the ground. What? I said I want the casket. You all are so selfish and greedy. You can use a casket made of pure gold to bury your father, but you cannot give me a morsel to hold on to? In fact, I'm already on my way to where it was buried. I must get it at all costs, whether you want to hand it over peacefully or not. Hold on. I need to get the story straight. There's nothing to process. I want your father's grave dug up and the golden coffin given to me immediately. We can always dump the body back into the ground as it is. I really don't give a damn about him. I knew it. I knew you only wanted to be in my dad's life for the money. It doesn't matter now, does it? The old fool is dead and I want what I want. I must live a life of pure luxury before I die. So hand over the golden casket before I go legal. Okay, okay. I would have done just what you wanted if dad was actually dead. What? My father is not dead. So what was all that show about? It was a trick. A test, if you will. Dad wanted to see if you were fit to come back into his life. Well, needless to say, you failed, lady. Failed? Amber doesn't fail. As a matter of fact, I'm standing right over his grave with a shovel and a massive hand drill. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to get the casket one way or another. Jeez. You really are a crazy person. I told you. I don't know where you are right now or what you're high on, but that's not Dad's graveyard. I don't understand what's going on. Dad was not the one who died. Huh? It was my father-in-law who died. He was also well-to-do, and was the one currently lying beneath the earth in the coffin made of gold. So, if you still want that, feel free to meet my husband. No, Mona, please, you have to forgive me. It's too late now. You were, and will always be, a filthy gold digger. You were blessed enough to get a second chance. But just like every other thing in your life, you threw it to the dogs. Now, you'll never have a place in this family or in Dad's life ever again. Let's talk about this like adults. Mona, please. So Mona was right. Oh, it's not what you think, Peter. How is it not what I thought when I saw all the texts and everything you sent to Mona? She warned me. She told me you hadn't changed one bit. She told me old dogs cannot learn new tricks, but I didn't listen. And to think, I actually wanted to give you a second chance after 20 years and four other marriages on your part? I should have known better. I'm really sorry, Peter. I promise things are not how they seem. I'm just shocked that you haven't learned your lesson after all these years. You need to stop acting like I'm the villain here. I didn't just ruin your life. You ruined mine too. It was your fault that my father disowned me in the first place. I was living large, Peter. You took everything away from me and gave me nothing in return. 
You would have had everything and more if you were just a little patient with me. By now, you would have been the queen of my world. You would have been in charge of all that I own. It's a shame you're still the same person. The same greedy and impatient person who only wants her own gratification and nothing else. I just needed some money to get by, Peter. It doesn't mean I don't love you anymore. But you were happy when you heard I was dead. Then you went after my supposed golden casket. Oh, Peter. I don't want to have this conversation anymore. You don't deserve a second of my time. I don't ever want to see you around my life, my house, or my kids again. Try me, and you'll face the music. That reminds me. I need to see my grandkids, Peter. I do not care if we're together anymore or not. Those children have nothing against me. You forfeited your rights as their grandma the day you abandoned their mother. There's really no need to say much about this. You have no right to see my kids or grandkids. In case you forgot, I'm still your wife. I never signed any divorce documents. Well, about that, I sent documents to your broke apartment downtown. Please sign them and get them back to me as soon as possible. I will not do that! If you don't, I'll send the law behind you. Don't play with me. Why are you doing this to me, Peter? Attached to the divorce papers, you'll find your copy of the invite to my wedding. You're getting married? Yes, to Tracy. Tracy? That's my ex-best friend. Yes. Tracy was the only one who cared to check on Mona and me when you abandoned us. She was the reason we had anything to eat for more than six months after you left. My heart was crushed when she had to relocate with her husband. But now that they've gotten a divorce, it's only expedient that I give her the life she deserves. You cannot do that, Peter. I've already done it. I'm sorry. Do have a good life, Amber. Bye. Driven by her insatiable greed, Amber finds herself isolated and rejected by both Peter and Mona. Despite her relentless attempts to regain her place in their lives, she ultimately realized that her manipulative and self-serving ways have caused irreversible damage. She was left to contemplate the emptiness of her material pursuits and the cost of her actions. Meanwhile, Peter, having successfully faked his death to test Amber's intentions, found closure in knowing that he had made the right decision to move on. His new life with Tracy brought him happiness and stability, as well as a chance to strengthen the bond he had with his daughter, Mona. Peter remained committed to providing for Mona and his grandchildren, focusing on the love and family he had found in Tracy. But while things seemed as though they had turned for the better, Mona still harbored resentment towards her mother. However, she learned valuable lessons about surrounding herself with those who genuinely cared for her. She embraced her role as a mother and wife and continued to thrive in her own family, breaking the cycle of dysfunction that nearly marred her childhood.